My name is uh, Uri Altour and I represent the Ultra Ethernet uh, Consortium, which uh, I'm honored to serve as uh, the chair of the Technical Advisory Committee and was uh, one of uh, the folks who actually made it even happen uh, back in the year 22. Uh, we are very honored and happy to be invited here to participate in the Ethernet Alliance uh, TEF. Uh, we chose the name Ultra Ethernet uh, for a reason. Ethernet represents an innovative community of uh, spreading anywhere from uh, providers, uh, components, uh, test tools, well-trained uh, operators, and consistently it has delivered gen after gen uh, more bandwidth at lower power at very compelling uh, cost points. Now, the AI transition inflection revolution does represent uh, an unprecedented uh, time in our industry and I've lived through uh, earlier transitions as well. Uh, in this case, we are really trying to solve a true system problem. You could start from the bottom up or you could start from the huge scale of a data center architecture and come all the way down to, to a component. Um, we are going to have to address uh, better data center architecture, rack architecture, cables, components, um, and, and cooling and power solutions. But we, we are here to talk about how all of this affects the network itself. And we, are, we have few networks of interest that are really uh, used by the accelerators in order to deliver this insatiate uh, bandwidth that is demanded by training. And uh, we also need to understand that there are few different uh, requirements or corners to, to this situation. Training is bandwidth sensitive. Inference, on the other end, is latency sensitive. And in the middle of all of this, there are uh, big questions of topology. There are questions of uh, what's the underlying technology that you want to use, uh, DMA-based, uh, memory semantics-based. Uh, and um, if you are focusing on RDMA, which is where Ultra Ethernet Consortium is at right now as we are getting ready for our release uh, version 1.0, uh, you'll notice that the transport that has been designed, uh, well, 25 years ago around RDMA needs to be modernized for these uh, demands of AI. If you recall, it was 25 years ago that the industry got together in order to define InfiniBand, and we are enjoying the same moment in the industry right now with the Ultra Ethernet. Um, the collaboration between Ultra Ethernet Consortium and uh, Ethernet Alliance uh, could not be uh, over impressed. It is critical that we get the Ethernet community to adopt some of those requests that we have for optional features that are going to help us move Ethernet forward to better address AI. UEC has made it very clear that in order to accelerate time to market, we are not asking switches to change. Existing switches could work very well for us. We are also not asking applications to change, uh, frameworks for AI or MPI or OpenHMEM for HPC. But the endpoint has to change for transport. Now, the switches, if you follow the Ultra Ethernet Consortium recommendation, we are putting them on this nice uh, curve where over time they provide even more functionality with some features that we are requesting the community, IEEE, uh, other organizations to help us support. This would include um, link level retry, it would include credit-based flow control, the optional switch offload uh, that is common in, in other technologies. So to wrap it up as we want to keep this short, um, the collaboration between Ultra Ethernet Consortium that right now has more than 90 companies, pretty much the whole industry is there, and the Ethernet Alliance and us working together at this TEF event could not have been more important and more timely. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Yuri.